Everyone believes that flying is not for the average person, and you must be a millionaire to own and fly an airplane. That's not totally true. The truth is, unless your mission is to fly at over 25,000 feet at 300 knots, that's when it gets expensive. But if you have more modest aims for your flying, like flying at a little over 100 knots, and your most frequent mission is taking 500 cross-country flights, then there are some truly cheap options available. Piper PA-12 Super Cruiser After Piper realized that it couldn't exist forever selling the J-3 Cub, it started making variants. The first of those that got the PA designation is the PA-12 Super Cruiser, a three-seat update to the Cub that you fly solo from the front seat. This plane is extremely versatile. You can fit floats on it for water landings, skis to land on snowy areas, and even rugged wheels to land somewhere remote. Piper built nearly 400 of them between 1946 and 1948. Over the years, many of the remaining PA-12s have gotten wing flaps and more than a few have gotten metal coverings, though Bush pilots prefer fabric for its lightweight and easy repairability. Super cruisers are surprisingly plentiful. You can still find most stock PA-12s for around $60,000 through $75,000 to $80,000 or thereabouts is more likely. They're easy planes to work on, though as with any plane built in the late 40s, you need to keep an eye on the metal structures, all of which, like the super cruiser skin, can be replaced. Piper Tomahawk the Tomahawk looked nothing like any previous or subsequent Piper, and because of that, it flew like nothing that came out of Vero Beach. One of the ideas behind the Tomahawk sounds really odd. The plane was designed to be harder to recover from a spin than its competitors. The idea was that it would allow instructors to show students how to get out of a spin better than planes like the 150 and 152 which were far more docile in their spin characteristics. The Tomahawk is sporty, has great visibility, and has a great engine. Most Tomahawks fall within the $35,000 range, but if you want to cut corners and lose your money very quickly, you can get them for less than $10,000 like this one here, though purchase prices are climbing, possibly due to flight schools looking to get their hands on cheap trainers before they all disappear. Beechcraft Musketeer When this plane was introduced, it was a big deal. With all metal fuselages, trailing link landing gear, and great handling characteristics, the Musketeer is fun to fly. Up front, most have Lycoming engines, though some early ones had Continental engines. The Musketeer family are solid planes, decent performers, roomier than just about all of their competitors, and reasonable to own and maintain. There's a lot of confusion over which Musketeer is which and that's understandable, as Beechcraft, at the time, did a terrible job of not only naming the plane, but also keeping the different varieties of it distinct in the potential customer's eyes. There are Musketeers ranging from the 150 horsepower Sport, designed for training with one fewer window per side, to the Custom 3 which was later named the Sundowner, to the Super 3, a 200-horsepower fixed-gear model that would cruise at an advertised 130 knots and close to that in real life. The 200-horsepower retractable gear Sierra isn't a bargain on the used market, though it's developed from the same type certificate as the original Musketeer of 1966. To add to the confusion, the Custom had a subsequent model called the Custom 3, though there was no Custom 2, and the Super 3 never had a Super 1 or a Super 2. The cheapest Musketeer I saw during my research was listed for $30,000 and it's just one. The others ranged from $40,000 to $60,000, which is a bargain compared to the Cessna Skyhawk of the same vintage that'll go for around twice as much. 
American AA-1 Yankee, also known as the Grumman American Lynx. Designed by Jim Beatty back in the 60s, the AA-1 was indeed launched as a rival to Cessna's dominant 150 trainers. The Yankee is a little faster than the 150, and it has some cool styling too, including a sliding canopy that owners love. Although the handling of the AA-1 is not exactly trainer-like, they are very light on the controls. It takes a little time to get used to, but once the pilot does get used to it, it is a lot of fun. Several companies built versions of the AA-1, and every one of them made at least a few changes to the basic design. So, if you're going AA-1 shopping, do your homework and know what you're getting. There are a few popular mods out there, including engines up to 150 horsepower, which makes the AA-1 a fast machine. And the plane, like its four-play siblings, tends to cost less to maintain than comparable models from other companies. You can find mostly stock AA-1s for $40,000. They can go as high as sixty dollars to $80,000 for more up-to-date models. Cessna 175 Skylark Introduced in 1958, two years after the 172 Skyhawk, the 175 was designed to fill a niche between the 172 and the faster 182. The Skylark wasn't simply a 172 with a different engine, it was just, in fact, a step-up plane for those wanting more speed, power, and hauling ability than a 172 but less than a 182. Cessna built more than 2,000 of them, around half of which are still flying around today. You can still find great 175 values, as they aren't as highly prized by flight school owners who want slightly older Skyhawks with their well-known engines. Still, prices on 175s are heading north, but you can find these birds for around $40,000. That is about half of what most Skyhawks are going for. For that price, you get a good airplane. Cessna 140 When this airplane was introduced in the 40s, it was loved and highly accepted. Despite the fact that the post-war market was saturated with cheap airplanes, Cessna still managed to sell more than 7,500 of them over its five-year production run. The little tail dragger had pleasing and docile handling and great landing behavior. The side-by-side -side seating is cozy, with a cockpit similar in dimensions to that of the 150, which is indeed an outgrowth of the 140. The Continental C85 and 90 engines it uses are cheap to get overhauled compared to other popular light plane engines of the day, and parts are still available through a variety of sources. You can find nice 140s on the used market for $40,000 or less. Ones in need of a little work sell for about twenty dollars to $30,000, which might be a bargain once you address the plane's needs. Grumman Tiger The Tiger is as versatile as the newest planes on the market today. Fun to fly, fast enough, capable and affordable to own are the defining characteristics of this plane. Visibility in this plane is great, with cruising speeds of over 130 knots, the Tiger gets down the road, and this it does with fixed gear and the 180 horsepower Lycoming 0360 engine. The range is surprisingly good too, at nearly 700 nautical miles. You can get a good used Tiger for around $45,000, which might not sound all that cheap until you consider the alternatives. What other plane will give you around 135 knots true, 650 plus nautical miles of range, the ability to carry four, and a sporty feel for that same price? There are not many alternatives out there especially when you factor in the reasonable ongoing maintenance costs of the Tiger. Flightstar 2SC 
you can get Flight Stars as single seater true ultralights. In this case, you don't need a pilot's license, never mind a medical certificate, to fly it. The two seat versions are experimental airplanes, even though they're built using conventional ultralight materials. Flight Stars are built with aluminum tubing for the fuselage and wing structures, with the wings covered in sailcloth. These materials help create very light aircraft. Its enclosure keeps you out of the wind, and its simple construction and design mean easy flying and reduced maintenance. By law, these are designed to be very slow. Ultralights can't exceed 55 knots max straight and level speed, and the experimental versions aren't much faster. They also fly in a way that is very adverse to yaw and sensitivity to gusts. The Flight Star 2 comes standard with side-by-side -side seating with dual controls and three-axis flight controls. There are no flaps, which is okay because the plane slips beautifully. Planes like this aren't for long cross-country flights because they're slow, have limited range, and there are a few creature comforts for the occupants. Instead, they excel at what they were designed to do, flying low and slow, the way all flying once was and the way many feel it's best done to this day. You can find them for around $15,000 with good sailcloth and low time, giving you a low initial investment, low maintenance cost, and a sky-high fun factor. Taylorcraft The airplane's design has a conventional layout, a high wing, fabric-covered, two-seat aircraft. The basic design has remained unchanged since 1936, and this design is sold as a personal sport aircraft today. Taylorcraft are simple machines that fly like lightweight, high-lift tail draggers do, light on the controls and with a good bit of adverse yaw. It's a pretty plane, and while there's not a lot of elbow room in the front seat, it's more of a social experience, and the center of gravity isn't as affected as much when bringing along a passenger. You can find Taylor Crafts for less than $20,000, and really nice examples can be had for less than $30,000. Beechcraft Bonanza Bonanzas are great values when it comes to doing what bonanzas do well, which is haul a whole family and go places fast. But the thing is, how much you pay for this plane is only a small part of the problem. With older V-tail Bonanzas, maintenance costs can be both high and unpredictable. Bigger engines, constant speed props, retractable landing gear, obsolete radios, and hard-to-find tails that are made of a rare material add up to potentially high maintenance costs. But. If you're up for the possibility of having to pay some hefty bills down the line, even if they might be intermittent ones, a mid to late 60s V-tail is hard to beat. With true air speeds of 165 knots or better, the ability to fly long cross-country legs, the power to fly high, and the comfort and panache of Beechcraft quality are all hard to beat. To get one in great condition that won't need work for years, probably, you could be looking at $70,000 to $100,000, which sounds like a lot of money, until you start comparing it with what you'd have to spend to get a comparable performance new plane. Then the value becomes clear. There's a 1970 model listed for $150,000 on controller.com, but on average, they sell for anything between $200,000 and $350,000. If you like our videos, please smash the like and subscribe button. You can also join us by clicking on the link next to the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.